as uh, we had discussed in the previous slides that uh, Fukutek et al uh, sort of formulated uh, uh, or developed the correlation for the uh, pr uh, pressure drop in the wet condition or irrigated with the liquid uh, for that bed. So, this is the figure uh, which shows a comparison of that correlation with the actual experimental data uh, um, and even with the another author with the Gardner. So, this is the uh, solid line is a theoretical uh, line predicted by Fukutek et al correlation uh, and this square one is the experimental one and circle is the gardener a researcher who has done some work on this sort of flow. So, one can see very clearly uh, the relation uh, developed uh, in the previous slide and so on can very well predict the trend uh, in the experiment which is happening. So, one can use those uh, correlation for the uh, dry bed pressure drop and wet bed pressure drop um, to study uh, the flow behavior even in the blast furnace. And as you can see uh, from this figure, um, higher diameter particle uh, size packing has the lower pressure drop at the same gas velocity than the smaller size uh, particle which is evident from Argon equation and it is expected. Um, this figure shows again um, the relation between various quantities uh, uh, with respect to the gas velocity. Uh, so, pressure drop in wet condition in a packing in a packed wet, pressure drop in a dry condition when there is no liquid present uh, in the packing in the system. Uh, so, this could be co uh, correlated like a stack zone in the blast furnace and this is like a drop dropping zone in the blast furnace where a liquid iron and slag is present and here mostly the gases are there in the stack region. And this is about the gravity force. Uh, this uh, is the total hold up of slag and total hold up of metal. So, as one can see that when velocity is increased, the um, pressure drop increases both in dry and wet condition. And, uh, as we know in the wet condition pre pressure drop is always higher and this is showing that trend. Similarly, the total hold up in case of slag increases quite rapidly uh, then total hold up for the metal liquid metal um, which increase only after uh, that gas velocity goes beyond. Uh, 2 meter per second and the gravity force um, on the liquid is also increases as the um, gas velocity is increased, but as the gas velocity increases the pressure drop in wet condition increases rapidly and it crosses the gravity force which means the liquid will start uh, hanging. And uh, so that uh, uh, hanging and fluidization uh, or the uh, 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 pressure drop becomes equal to this, the fluidization will occur and further increase of gas really will uh, uh, go toward the uh, flooding condition. And under this uh, situation, uh, your slag and metal would be going up into the higher zone of the blast furnace which is cooler and they will solidify it and more 
problem will occur then in the upper zone. So, mal distribution of gas and other things will occur and it will uh, block the uh, pores in between the particles and will further reduce the um, permeability of the blast furnace and the blast furnace performance will deteriorate. So, which is not the good thing, but it is a predict uh, a trend in a good way and one can see from this uh, metal total hold up is about 3 percent and uh, uh, slag hold up is about 4 percent uh, in the blast furnace and this is sort of has been found um, by day section of the blast furnace which, which we will see uh, later on. Uh, so, the prop, uh, property which have been used uh, in constructing this uh, diagram where the particle size uh, multiplied with the self factor is uh, 0 0.015 meter bed porosity or porosity in the dropping zone 0.459 uh, slag velocity is 7 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter per second L liquid uh, velocity uh, the metal velocity 8.6 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter per second the viscosity of the slag is 1 pascal second and for metal it is 0 0.005 pascal second. So, you can see the metal viscosity it is almost 3 times lower than the slag viscosity. So, slag is quite viscous though the quantity formed uh, um, in the blast furnace uh, of slag is much more than uh, the metal one and the density difference between these two is also quite substantial. So, for metal is about 7000 uh, kg per meter cube while for slag it would be about 28, 2900 kg per meter cube and this leads to the different uh, um, hold up uh, of metal and slag in the dropping zone which is evident from this uh, figure. Now, because we certainly do not want to operate the blast furnace uh, um, above the flooding limit, uh, otherwise the efficiency will, will decrease or blast furnace will hang, the operation will ha uh, hang and uh, um, then one has to shut it down. So, lots of work has been done and this is similar to many chemical reactors. Uh, they also do not operate uh, above the flooding uh, uh, point. So, lots of research work has been done and uh, especially in chemical engineering the literature uh, which has been uh, uh, filled with this uh, flooding and uh, other data. Uh, they have constructed uh, a diagram called Marsman flooding diagram uh, which is <coughs> which looks like that and for metallurgical purpose uh, we have uh, put uh, other uh, non wetting flow and other thing in this one and it has been modified a bit. So, uh, you can see this is the for the metallurgical one which correlation uh, was proposed uh, previously and shown in the previous slide and this is a Marsman correlation uh, uh, dotted line. So, the dark uh, uh, sphere is for the wetting flow and the uh, open sphere is for the non wetting flow and in chemical engineering mostly um, flow is related to the wetting condition, but in uh, metallurgical discipline mostly it is non wetting condition as, and that is why it has been modified and it has been replotted for non wetting condition as shown by this figure and this diagram. So, at one side we have a dimensionless pressure loss um, and on the x axis we have a dimensionless irrigation density. So, 
any reactor usually should uh, be operated in this regime. So, flooding should not occur if it goes above that then uh, it is not good it should not go into this regime and then lots of operational problem will come into picture. So, using the uh, diagram one can check um, whether the reactor or the process is operating below the flooding limit. limit. Um, based on that there is a example for you to do it as so, using the modified Mossman flooding diagram, calculate whether flooding occurs, also estimate the dry bed pressure drop per unit length. Values of the parameter may be taken from the previous example. So, as you uh, we have done couple of example. Uh, on this pressure drop and other thing uh, um, related to blast furnace dropping zone. So, values uh, can be directly taken from those uh, example. Uh, so, in this one what we will do we will use the modify Marshman flooding diagram which was shown before. So, we need the value of this parameter where mu L is the viscosity of the metal, rho L is the density of the metal, cavitation force, velocity of liquid, void fraction in the drop, uh, dropping zone, uh, particle size and the contact angle. And similarly here is the pressure drop uh, per unit length if you uh, take delta L across at some length and rho L is the density of the liquid. So, what we have to do we have to first calculate this uh, x axis. So, irrigation density, density which is given by this. So, viscosity is 0 0.005 Pascal second from our previous example. Density of the liquid 6800 kg per meter cube and the gravitation constant 9.81. Then you have the velocity of the liquid 0 0.0001 um, meter per second. So, we boil down to point or 1 millimeter per second and the void fraction in the previous example we had taken 0.43 it was given shape factor was 0.65 particle size 0.03 meter which is about 3 centimeter <coughs> and uh, the contact angle between the liquid and the uh, uh, coke or liquid and the particle particle in the blast furnace is coke in the drip in the dropping zone because everything else is in uh, liquid form. So, that contact angle uh, is 90 which gives you the irrigation density about 6.7 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, if we look at the, that 6 point um, this quantity. So, 6.7 into 10 to the power minus 6 is coming somewhere here. So, which uh, actually we look at the, this. So, this gives a uh, flooding limit somewhere here. So, around 1.8 or like this. So, from this if we calculate the flooding will occur if we have a dimensionless pressure drop about 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 1. So, now what we have to do we have to check whether this quantity is closer to this or not. So, to calculate now, this uh, uh, pressure loss dimensionless, um, we you are already familiar with this equation which we um, discussed um, in two, uh, 2, 3 lectures before. Uh, so, this is the <coughs> pressure drop for dry bed where essentially uh, uh, argon equation 
So, in this one we substitute the appropriate value void fraction, particle size, shape factor, gas viscosity this also in one example we calculated <coughs> and then gas velocity all our things are available with us. So, if we substitute these values into this we get the pressure drop in the dry bed 2 to 6 point 8 for normal per meter cube. And of course, in non dimensional form we divide this one with the density of the liquid and the gravitational force <coughs> it gives us about 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, if you <coughs> look at uh, for flooding to occur <coughs> we need uh, this sort of pressure it should uh, if a pressure drop is coming up to this and more then certainly pressure <coughs> flooding is going to occur. But our calculation shows the pressure drop is 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 <coughs> which is really coming somewhere way below here. So, <coughs> we are operating somewhere here which is quite below to the flooding limit and we are very safe in that case <coughs> to operate the process uh, using under this operating condition. So, this uh, uh, says the calculated value is lesser than the flooding value we can conclude that flooding does not occur. So, you can see uh, the calculated value is uh, less than the flooding value. So, we can conclude that flooding does not occur in this case. <coughs> so, this is the way uh, this trigram is very useful um, in the industry uh, to know whether uh, the operation is uh, below the flooding limit. So, efficiency of the reacted uh, does not affect. <coughs> this figure shows the effect of coke size on liquid metal static hold up. So, you can see <coughs> uh, this is actually let me tell you the actual live blast furnace result uh, when I say the live which means the blast furnace uh, has been quenched and dissected and then the data were collected. So, it is in the actual blast furnace. So, in th that case the static hold up is saying about the total static hold up of liquid metal not this like liquid metal. Uh, <coughs> these are the conditions that the uh, uh, of the blast furnace when it was uh, quenched and dissected and density of the liquid was 6.8 <coughs> gram per centimeter cube and uh, surface tension 1.1, shape factor 0.65 and void fraction 0.43 and <coughs> the harmonic mean diameter of the coke because uh, it is changing from one location to another location and that is why uh, the diameter of the coax change from 2.5 centimeter to 5 centimeter. So, you can see as the diameter of the coax uh, is uh, increasing the static hold up of the metal is decreasing one thing. Second thing also you will find uh, <coughs> that uh, here it is shown theta which is the contact angle 0 degree which is totally wetting condition the liquid spreads over the solid 90 degree which is uh, said that the non wetting starts and more is the uh, angle after this more is the non wetting effect. So, one can clearly see the especially in the blast furnace the condition are mostly lying under the non wetting condition. The liquid metal and uh, uh, coke uh, really 
uh, having a sort of non wetting flow in that, uh, because most of the data are in this one and which are quite well fitting with the non wetting uh, line. So, of course, when the um, coke size is lower, the um, hold up is more um, and as it decreases the hold up becomes lower and lower. So, this is the condition near the uh, raceway <coughs> where finer size is there, but little away you may get a bigger size also. So, this is the actual blast furnace condition how the hold up occurs and it clearly also shows effect of the contact angle. So, flow is mostly non wetting in nature. Now, this brings out another aspect of the liquid flow in metallurgical discipline discipline as such uh, and in particular in the blast furnace. So, there are many studies of liquid flow through packed bed in the chemical engineering literature and these are difficult to apply to metallurgical processes for a number of reasons. One the most studies have been done for wetting condition which are common in the chemical process industries. So, we have heavily borrowed the data literature from chemical discipline uh, and not much work has been done uh, by metallurgists. So, the and the superficial velocity and liquid hold up in metallurgical processes are often very low compared to the typical chemical processes which has a very high flow rate or liquid hold up. Then most studies have been for uniform liquid flow with uniform counter current or co current gas flow. This is uh, mostly in the chemical uh, discipline. The horizontal shift of a percolating liquid caused by a cross flow of gas is rarely considered. So, in the blast furnace you are having a cross flow the lateral injection of the gas the tear is uh, protruding inside the blast furnace. So, from the side you are injecting the gas and liquid is flowing down. So, it is a cross flow condition which we had discussed be before when we were talking about the counter current, co current and cross flow. So, in blast furnace we have mostly the cross flow condition and this is rarely dealt uh, in the literature. So, almost no study for non wetting condition. In fact, there is hardly any study uh, in the chemical uh, literature under non wetting condition which are prevailed in metallurgical field and this is very important. Uh, so, we cannot directly apply uh, these chemical uh, principle uh, to metallurgical uh, reactors. So, experimental observation of most researcher reveal that non wetting liquid flow is discrete in nature, which may be a mixture of discrete rivulet or droplets, wetting liquid flow in the form of film over the packing um, in a packed bed. So, as you know the when we say wetting you must be aware about the um, liquid flow on a glass. So, which usually is spread over very easily and that sort of flow what we call the wetting flow or the film flow. However, in metallurgy uh, flow are more discrete in nature and not continuous. So, thus the modeling of non wetting liquid as a continuous phase does not represent the actual physical picture. Also, continuum model fails to predict liquid flow region when packed wet is irrigated with a point source. So, these are quite a uh, 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 big difference between the uh, chemical and metallurgical reactors in terms of liquid flow. And the 
theory which is used by chemical engineers to describe the liquid flow in the peg bag cannot directly uh, be used in metallurgical reactor. So, another theory has been proposed for this. So, it is proposed that liquid at low flow rate must be considered as discrete instead of continuum in non wetting condition. So, we said about the discrete liquid flow. So, when we said discrete which means this like in a not a continuous way it is in breaking form. So, like here you can see the drop uh, let coming one by one and falling on a particle let us say on a coke uh, particle and traveling down and goes to other either this side or that side and or you can have a bigger sort of rivulet which travels and is in contact with the particles, but not a continuous one again in a discrete manner different different separate separate. You can have even a large rivulet uh, depending what sort of conditions are there. So, that you can have a big rivulet which is go going through it looks like a continu uh, continuous flow, but again this would be after some time would be breaking somewhere. So, you again you end up in a discrete manner. Uh, so, this is a basic difference between the continuum and discrete flow. We here the liquid is breaking in between. So, you cannot treat this one as a continuum. So, modeling this flow as a continuum would be problem. So, based on this uh, concept uh, the theory developed uh, uh, in the literature where uh, it is said that if gas flow is coming from this direction and the liquid flow uh, and this is the packing through which the liquid is flowing. So, essentially you have three resistance the effective frictional resistance of by the packing that is what you call the wet resistance. Then you have the gas direct force which is acting on the liquid. So, liquid is facing the resistance from the packing facing the resistance or drag force from the gas and a force on the liquid is acting by the gravity. So, once these three forces are in equilibrium that is going to give you the direction of the liquid flow. So, using a this simple force balance approach uh, people are able to uh, model the liquid flow in the blast furnace. Uh, in fact, this uh, <coughs> video probably can give you a little idea uh, about uh, this uh, uh, flow. So, this uh, video it is about the liquid flow in the raceway uh, zone when or raceway or combustion zone gas is injected um, into the blast furnace from the side and uh, combustion occurs uh, in front of the tier through where the gas is injected and that is the hottest uh, region which we had discussed before also and we will discuss more into uh, about this region. So, uh, oxygen and air is there coke it con uh, because with the high velocity it comes. So, it forms a cavity and which is uh, known as the raceway. So, combustion occur in that region temperature is very high. So, all the melting of the uh, liquid uh, iron and gas uh, uh, slag is there and one can see clearly in this picture how it is happening. So, this is uh, inside uh, uh, that combustion zone in the raceway and uh, when gas is flowing you can see the coke which is burning and tumbling around coming in between in a swirling form and you can see the liquid metal which is dripping down if this is in the raceway zone and you can see clearly it is in the form of rivulet or droplet is breaking up again combining. So, it is not a continuous one and this is the live video of 
the furnace when furnace is in operation and when this thing is happening. So, certainly it is not a continuous flow you cannot model it uh, as a film flow and one has to go in a discrete uh, uh, liquid theory to model this sort of flow. We will stop here.